Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, happy creation number, what is it? Five? Four. 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 It's okay. four. Five ends at Thanks. Thanksgiving Thanks. night. Yes. yes. And to, today is also Worldwide Communion. And if you had noticed, there is uh, an abundance, a plethora of bread in the front. And I'm going to ask, actually, Allison, if she just mention now what we have in the basket and maybe where, maybe where it came from. Uh, the okay. top one at 12 o'clock, the braided one, that's challah. Challah. It's Jewish celebration bread. Um, the one that you can't see a lot of at 3 o'clock is Dutch pumpernickel. Okay. And the one at 6 o'clock is a country corn. That's what it's called. Okay. And the one at nine o'clock is a multi-grain, which says it's traditional. Okay. All right. And they came from whose hands made these? I did. You did. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, that's fantastic. And in addition, thank you very much, Allison. In addition, we have some Foodland pumpernickel, which is on our communion table. So I will be sharing in that. Um, but yes, Foodland makes a nice pumpernickel as well. So we're grateful for that. Thank you, Allison. So being, being week four in creation, uh, we uh, welcome everyone here today, present. Those who are going to read the service at home and those who will see online later. May this church space be a place where each one of us feels safe and respected, a part of God's family. God created and cherishes our diversity in age, in gender, sexual orientation, body build, health, and history. As we pray, work, sing, lament, and celebrate, we do so as equal members of God's beloved kingdom. May this time be a sacred hour of community with God, Share in announcements. We first pray for Trinity and a Church in Magnetowan today, as well as Larchwood Memorial out in Dowling. And specifically, we have uh, a celebration happening just across the tracks today at the Anglican Church. They are celebrating 100 years, and some folks will be uh, celebrating it in a dinner later today. Uh, and we join, uh, we join. Uh, prayers and lift them up today. Also for the Youth and Young Adult Church, uh, the Young Adult Church is being covenanted today at, at St. Andrews downtown at 1230. We have refreshments downstairs and if you didn't know it, we might have bread. We might, we might be snacking on some bread might not need it with all those sandwiches. <laughs> oh, that's true. Uh, th yes, there was a shower here yesterday. Uh, Nancy, Nancy shower uh, for her, her daughter-in-law. Da yeah. Daughter-in-law. And there is an abundance of leftovers. So, <laughs> yeah. You, you, we've got lunch after church. Yes. As well, uh, lectionary Bible study resumes on Tuesday at 10 o'clock uh, with some, some Exciting and informative and interesting conversations we have, as well as worship. We also have, looking forward, to, oh, Tuesday. This Tuesday is Messy Church. Yeah. Woo! And we will be celebrating the whole season of creation. So if you know little ones, uh, have folks in the community that uh, will want to come, bring their, bring their parent or their grandparent along with them, uh, it is an hour and a half of Wow, it goes like that, right, Christina? It just flies. So it will be a, a good, a good time for all uh, in, in that activity. So messy church on Tuesday uh, from six to seven thirty. Looking ahead, we're going to on October fourth, uh, Sisters in Spirit Day. So to be in solidarity with families of missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, Two Spirit people. We need, to, we need to take account and we need to mark this down. And of course, last week we talked about uh, SASE, downtown outreach, uh, needing, desperately needing some uh, items. 
Well, at the back, when you leave today, make sure you pick up this, uh, this uh, green form, and it has uh, the list of all of the items that they're looking for, from anywhere from new packages of socks and underwear to fall and winter jackets and sweaters, uh, and not needing to be new, but um, a gift for someone who could use it and um, that you don't need anymore. Anything, jewelry, toothbrushes, conditioner, baby wipes, hairbrushes, it's all on, on this form that you can put on your, on your fridge at home, uh, share with others, and there will be a bin that will be here next week for folks to put those items in. Thank you. We gather for worship on land where indigenous people have lived for thousands of years. This church is located on the traditional territory of the Monobatebing and Anishinaabek. We lament the damage that European colonization has had on First Nations, Inuit, and Métis communities, and we acknowledge that many Indigenous people still today live with intergenerational trauma, racism, and inequity. All who live in this area are parties to the Robinson-Huron Treaty, which outlines the shared rights and responsibilities connected to the care and use of the land. As a covenant people, we are called to honor promises. As a church, we have been called to a journey of learning, reconciliation, and reparation. As Christ's people, we are called to love our neighbors. May God support and bless our commitment to live out these calls. We light the Christ candle. May its light guide us in speaking truth and to traveling good paths. May we in turn share the light with those we meet until it spreads to all. Please join us in our call to worship. What a tremendous day. We gather to celebrate with people from around the world. We join as partners on a journey. We sing thanksgiving. We sing hope. We are the church, strong and resilient in Christ. With one voice, we proclaim God's inclusiveness. With one voice, we gather around the world today. Let us worship God. Let us rest into the silence of this place of worship as we let go of all concerns and cares during this moment of stillness and peace. The spirit of life reveals herself to us in the soft darkness of our closed eyes and gentle breaths. Let us feel the complete love of our Creator God in the quiet sanctuary of our hearts. Let us breathe deeply of Christ's holy presence in this place. Amen. Let's sing. <laughs>
Indeed, <laughs> there are moments when we are fragile. So, uh, love that line in the hymn. Because it's all of us. It is indeed, isn't it? May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. If anyone wants to join me at the front for a time of all ages, for all ages, could be in the bag today. <laughs> it's, a, it's a chicken, which I'm grateful there is a farmhouse downstairs in the kids' car. <laughs> because I needed a chicken today. Uh, a chicken, wow, why in the world do I have a chicken in the bag? Well, um, our daughter Mackenzie's home. She's home for a visit and then home for the winter, uh, but a, a short time now. And of course I have to fill the fridge and the cupboards with all her favorites, <laughs> right? Uh, and of course we get, we get farm fresh eggs. We're pretty happy about that. So we needed some extras. So I was just sharing with her that, yeah, Mac, go for it. Uh, any of the eggs you want, we are not going to run out. So she was mentioning that she and her partner, Chris, they go to a farm out in Alberta, and they get their eggs. And they have, it's a friend's place, so they got a tour of the chicken coop. And their friends are kind of new to this. So they were, they're learning as they go. And they got a tour, and they went into the chicken coop, and it was, it was, Pretty chaotic um, because there were three, there were three rungs or th or three next th right. three tiers in there, and then um, we'll get to talking about outside in a moment. But she said inside, um, while the whole time they were talking, uh, the whole time they were talking, a chicken like this. Does anyone know what the name of this kind of a chicken is? Rock Island Red. No. <laughs> No, not a pretty thing. Not a pretty at all. No, it's called a silky or a silken chicken. And sometimes folks get them out there in their hen houses, in their, in their chicken coops. And there's only one there. And this one is not this particular one, but the one that was in this coop is an elderly chicken. And it's got, it's got a lot of respect, actually. Apparently it's got a fair bit of clout in this chicken coop because the entire time they were in there talking, it, this little old chicken, it took forever to get to the first rung, the first bench, then to the second, and then to the third, and that's where this little ugly-ish chicken sat, this old elderly chicken. Uh, so then they were talking about what goes on in the chicken coop, and that there are places where chickens can sit and where they are not sitting. And that depends on who's ruling the roost or who's, who's determining where chickens are going to be. It's a pecking order, which is, it's a whole thing. Like, I, I heard pecking order for years, but that's what it is. It's a pecking order. So, hey, you learn something new every day. Um, so, we're watching, she's watching, they're watching these chickens and there are some on the lower rung and the next and the top. And then they said, well, you haven't seen anything yet. Wait till we go outside. In the tree, the ones that didn't make cut rank inside the chicken coop, the top ones were, got rank up in the top of the tree, and then the lower branches and lower branches, and then the ones that just were on the ground. They're on the ground. That is. That is the pecking order that takes place. Yes. We raised uh, chickens for years and that's exactly what happened. It's, yeah. it's wild. It's wild. Uh, one night there was a terrible thunderstorm and this poor girl, a uh, friend of Mackenzie's, uh, went out and got the chickens, rounded them up and got them into the chicken coop because she just couldn't take the fact that they were out in the trees and that, that wasn't fair. <laughs> no matter who was deciding where these chickens were going to be. So I wonder, do we have pecking orders? Pecking, do we have, do we have ranks? Yes. 
Where, how do we, well, give me an example. Well, right here, you're the highest in our church. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. You're the old bird. I am the old bird, yeah. yeah. You're not the old <laughs> That's an interesting perception. Well, we're going to, we'll get into that sometime. <laughs> you may be off the mark somewhat, surely. Yeah. Anyone, anyone think about pecking orders or hierarchies? I think the animals have pecking orders. Like, uh, there's a leader amongst all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're the leader of them all. And it doesn't matter what kind of an animal it is. There's still even a cow or a horse or whatever. There's always a leader. I said, and I think that's true in business. In business? Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, I, in yeah. my work, I yeah. definitely yeah. chain of command. Healthcare. Or okay. organizational charts, I believe. Right, right. Royalty. Royalty. Yeah, royalty. Yeah. royalty. Yeah. royalty. It exactly. wasn't yeah. my family, but my grandfather, but, yeah. that was it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good example. Yeah. yeah. Families. It's true, because when my parents died, my niece turned to me and said, you're the matriarch now. Mm -hmm. And I said, pardon me? <laughs> <laughs> no. We don't have shoes to that. You don't, we don't have feet that, that big yeah. to fill, right? Yeah. Right. So today we're going to do some exploring uh, worldwide communion, mm -hmm. yep. considering uh, Christ, our Godhead, the Triune God, Head of the Church, Head of us all. Mm -hmm. uh, says no, no. There is no. Everybody says it. I, I don't love you more than I love you, than I love you, than I love you, God says. And so we're going to do a little bit of exploring into uh, uh, Paul and the, uh, the Philippians and a message that he shares with them about what Christ says about togetherness and what does it mean to be community and together in unity. So I'm looking forward to getting into that with everyone. And this... Poor little chicken. We'll head to the communion table and we'll think about <laughs> what it means to be to be to have to be to be put in a place. And we know all too well what took place yesterday, a day of truth and reconciliation, and where hierarchies and where colonialism yeah. made decisions about who is here and who is here and who should not be. And it's still going on. Yeah. And it yeah, still it's goes still going on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's uh, let's pretend that we are sitting right next to someone, and maybe you want to reach out and hold their hand as we say the Lord's, <laughs> oh my as hand, we oh my say the Lord's prayer together. <laughs> Creator God, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Uh, a quick time for Thanksgiving gratitude and mission. And uh, I'm going to share that I'm giving thanks today for the LST in this church, the lay supervision team. There is deep gratitude for the work and in their sharing of ongoing love and support for this student minister. I am uh, incredibly grateful. As well, we need to thank the, the council, the Trinity Council, for their ongoing support so that I can experience uh, work with clergy out in the greater world as well as uh, activities at, at, my, at school. So I'm grateful for Trinity Council as well, which is all of you. And the minute for mission is education beyond classroom walls. When we think of education, many of us envision a classroom with books and chalkboards, but education extends far beyond that. Through education, we can learn how the world works and how we work in the world. The Women and Family Services Division of the Church of Christ in Congo provides children with the education and training they need to take charge of their own lives when they leave school. With a combination of traditional education and life skills, they provide each child with the skill set they need to thrive after graduation. Through funding, livestock and seeds are purchased to teach children sustainable agriculture. Older children have the opportunity to assist with livestock after their classes. They learn to care for chickens and mm -hmm. take part in odd jobs in the field. Your generosity through Minute for Mission helps fund programs that inspire learning and skills for life. Thank you. So God's work needs many hands. We know this. God's work needs our trust and our participation. So we give to God our offering in our weekly giving through par, in our service to others, in our actions, and with our time and our talents. We present our offering. Let us pray. Abundant God, full of surprises. A simple loaf of bread becomes food for a hungry world. A cup of unfermented wine becomes hope for the young and not so young. Today we join hands with siblings in Christ all around the world. Today we share our offerings knowing they, like a loaf and a cup, will help to bring new life to this community of faith and to the world that you so love. Receive them with delight, we pray. Amen. If, then, <clears throat> there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, 
not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence. Work on your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. For this reading from scripture, thanks be to God, and by God's grace, we hear a living word in it. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. God, help us this morning, those who had a struggle to get up and out, and others who waited and watched the clock, looking forward to getting out the door and getting here. However, we've come. Help us to settle our minds and our thoughts, the things that we'll do this afternoon and tonight, and just stop for this moment. Give us the peace to sit in your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, stone soup. You may recall hearing this story told to you as a child, or perhaps with others you might have shared the story. Stone Soup is a, is a European folk story in which a hungry stranger convinces people of a town to each share a small amount of food, creating a meal for everyone to enjoy. This story is age old, and it is told in various ways from various countries and cultures. In some places it's known it's known as button soup, or wood soup, or axe soup. And if you Google stone soup, you will find 124 million references made to it. This particular, this particular stone soups, I knew that was going to happen. Stone soup story is told by Anthony DeMello from Margaret Silf's 100 Wisdom Stories from Around the World. And the story goes, a young woman in a village was surprised to find a fairly well-dressed stranger at her door, asking for something to eat. I'm sorry, she said. I, I have nothing in the house right now. Well, not to worry, said the pleasant stranger. I, I have a soup stone in this satchel of mine. If you will let me put it in a pot of boiling water, I'll make the most delicious soup in the world. A very large pot, please. The woman was curious. She put the pot on fire and whispered the secret of this, this soup stone to a neighbor. By the time the water began to boil, all the neighbors had gathered to see the stranger and his soup stone. The stranger dropped the stone into the soup, into this water, and then he tasted it with a teaspoonful and exclaimed, ah, delicious. All it needs is some potatoes. I have potatoes in my kitchen, shouted one woman, and in a few minutes, she came back with a, a large quantity of sliced potatoes, which were thrown into the pot. Then the stranger tasted the brew again. Ah, oh, excellent. But he said, adding wistfully, if we only had some meat, this would become a tasty stew. Another neighbor rushed home to bring some meat, which the stranger accepted graciously and flung it into the pot. 
When he tasted the broth again, he rolled his eyes heavenwardly, and he said, Ah, oh, tasty. If we had some vegetables, it would be perfect, absolutely perfect. One of the neighbors rushed off and returned with a basket full of carrots and onions. After these had been thrown in too, the stranger had tasted the mixture and said, with a voice of command, salt and sauce. Right here, said the woman of the house, and got the salt and some sauce. And then came another command, bowls for everyone. People rushed home to their homes and searched for bowls. Some even brought back bread and fruit. And they all sat down to a delicious meal while the stranger handed out large helpings of his incredible soup. Everyone felt strangely happy as they laughed and talked and shared this very first common meal. And in the middle of the merriment, the stranger quietly slipped away, leaving behind the miraculous soup stuff, which they could use at any time they wanted to, to make the loveliest soup in the world. Great story. Yes, this is a folk tale. It's a story. <clears throat> and it is certainly about sharing and working together to make something awesome. The people heard about something and it sounded really good. And so they wanted to be a part of it. And they contributed. Contributed perhaps all they had. With their handfuls of vegetables or meat to create one delicious pot to enjoy together. And the stone, of course, well, it wasn't meant for consumption, but it did represent the reason for people to be drawn into community. And they surely were. In today's reading, while Paul sits in a jail cell, once more being persecute, persecuted for speaking about Jesus, he has written a letter to the Philippians, a place this place is a Christian community called Philippi in eastern Macedonia. Paul is very fond of these people as he writes with affection, encouraging people to love and to care for each other. Now, Paul likely had known that the Christian community, not unlike Christian communities today, that there were bound to be squabbles and bound to be squabbles now in the church and perhaps behavior like chickens we talked about a pecking order can form in society itself we know that hierarchies can be established in all sorts of groups you may be in the coop or you may be found sleeping in the trees and even those who are in the trees there's a pecking order there too Paul's message shares that if we are to have any partnership in the spirit in Christ Jesus, we are to do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard for others as better than ourselves, regard them better than ourselves, and each of us not look at our own interests but in the interests of others. Eugene Peterson, from the NIV and the Message Study Bible, which some of you have, shares about this letter that Paul has written to the Philippians. And he notes that although Paul, having been traveling for 20 some years or so in the service of Jesus, he's tired and his body's weary. However, there is a joy there is a joy that Paul experiences on the inside. Paul's joy is having a life of Jesus that cannot be contained. Paul's message speaks about the joy 
and Peterson adds that Christ is, among other things, the revelation that God cannot be contained or hoarded. It is in this spilling out of Christ's life that accounts for the happiness of Christians. Let me say that again. It is in the spilling out of Christ's life that accounts for the happiness of Christians. The joy of life in excess, the overflow of what cannot be contained within any one person. The scripture today reveals that Christ emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, a servant. Assuming human likeness, he humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Christ emptied himself so that we might have joy of life in excess. On this day of worldwide communion, let us be Christians who, whose joy is spilling out, where every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. We come together with Christ at the center, like that stone in the soup, contributing to this wonderful pot we call church with our whole selves, throwing in our need for community, stirring in our bold discipleship, adding richness with our caring hands, and a desire for daring justice, deeply flavoring with praying and compassionate hearts. We come hungry to be nourished and strengthened in God's abundant love. There are bowls for everyone. We are invited to share this meal at Christ's table. God's goodness is spilling over. Amen. Helping each part of your creation 
to come into being, loved by you, known by you, given meaning and matter by your word and your love. Hallelujah. From the patterns that flow between the galaxies, the elements that come from the heart of the stars, the energy that flows in heat and light, life as we know it, was born. Single-celled creatures to complex beings, the web of life of which we human beings are one part. All of it loved by you. We join in the song of praise sung by all things, by all things that you have made to be. Holy, 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 holy God, God of life and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Bless us is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. But even with in all of the greatness you brought into being, even with the natural cycles of life and death and life that comes anew, there is brokenness. As human beings, we tend to forget that everything exists, everything that lives and moves and has its being embedded and enlivened by you, by divine love and hope and wonder. We try to dominate rather than live in harmony with the elements and with the rest of the kingdoms of life with each other. We forget that each and every person is not only your beloved, but was created in your image. In the fullness of our many genders, in the joy of who we are, able to love, and in our brokenness. Humankind tries to dominate each other, forcing people into smallness, pushing them to be something they aren't, rather than celebrating the harmony of you who has created each of your beloved to be. Forgive us, loving God. Forgive, Forgive us, loving God. God. But more than that, help us to understand where we add to the brokenness, where we hurt and harm others, with the smallness of our understanding with the lack of our love and help us to change, to stand with all your beloved, of every face and shape, of every gender identity and expression, of every romantic orientation and sexual expression, of every race and space and place and time. And help us to understand that you invite everyone to your feast and that it is our task to ensure that everyone knows that this is your feast, not ours. That they, their place is already there. Set out by God that loves and that no one can take it away. Hallelujah, loving God. Help us to remember and help us to share with all who wish to hear that Jesus came to this world, a tiny baby, a child, a teen, an adult, a part of God's self, exemplifying God's infinite love, lived in human ways. He laughed with those who laughed and mourned with those who mourned. He taught and he listened and healed, but most of all, he loved everything, everyone, and he called us back to that love for you and for all people as we love ourselves. On the night before he was taken to what would be his death, Jesus gathered his disciples, his friends, for a meal of remembrance and hope. He took the bread, gave thanks to God. And for all that caused it to be, he broke it, saying, 
This is my body given for you. And each time you eat the bread, remember me. And when the meal was over, he took the cup and he filled it. I gave thanks again. And he gave it to those gathered around, saying, Take this cup, all of you, and drink it. For sin that's forgiven. And each time you drink it, remember me. So we eat and we drink. And we remember. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ, Christ will, will come again. again. Holy God. Make your spirit known to this bread and this cup. And in all you invite to your table, that they and we might truly be Christ's body and blood alive in the world, through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy now and forever. We continue to pray. We pray today for beginnings and endings, for those who gather to celebrate at a covenanting for a young adult church and in their excitement. God be with them. And for those who meet today to celebrate the life of Reverend Don Van Eyck, God hold people in your peace. We pray for this place, this place of safety, of community. Help us to continue to be that of unity and oneness. <coughs> In your name. We now pray the words that Jesus taught his disciples and have taught us. Creator God, who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, for power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gift of God for all creation. Thank you, God. Come, for the table is ready. And our cup overflows. Bread of life. Our cup of joy. Let's pray. For the bread we have eaten and the wine we have tasted, God, we are truly grateful and thankful. Amen. Amen.
We have worshipped and we have feasted and our spirits are well nourished. Let us take up the challenge of radical, loving, courageous justice seeking and compassionate nurturing. May the grace of God sustain us. May the example of Jesus guide us. And may the daring of the Holy Spirit encourage us. Today, tomorrow, and in all the days ahead. Amen. Amen. Amen.